Tadak Sessor Shout out to my Ninja IMG You gon' blow something like Daddy DG <laughs> Zero to hundred man This one a free star mood I love you The Ninja IMG Duck Follow him on Facebook, Instagram and all the social networks Really excited. So hello everyone, it's your boy Dr. Obino, the Niger IMG Doc. Uh, you're all welcome to my first official interview. I told you guys I'm going to be interviewing a lot of IMGs, Nigerian origin of African origin. I mean, all IMGs have like uh, similar struggles. So there's a lot for you to learn regardless of where you're from. So right here with me is someone B, <laughs> someone special. Someone who taught me in my days in med school. Uh, and I'm happy to have you here as my first guest. You're welcome. I don't want to do the introduction, okay? I'll chip in. So I'll let him introduce himself to you. Hello, everyone. So my name is uh, Ahize Chuku Eke. Um, obviously, I'm a Nigerian. I was born in uh, Enugu. Actually, I was born at UNDH Enugu so many years ago. <laughs> um, I came to the US in 2010. And like Dr. Bino said, we all come to this country through different routes and from different purposes. And in the course of this, I'm going to tell you guys my journey, how I came here, and um, what I think people who come into this country should do, and how they should, you know, different paths for them to get into residency. So briefly, I um, finished medicine at the University of Calabar in 2003. Um, after I finished residency, sorry, uh, medical school in 2003, I did my housemanship at uh, Federal Medical Center Umwa here in between 2004 to 2000, sorry, 2004 to 2005, yes. Then after that, I did my youth service um, in Akwai Bomb State and then I marched into residency. So I had taken my primaries uh, in, uh, uh, in OBGY or OIG, as well back home. So when you say marched into residency, you mean in Nigeria, In right? Nigeria, okay. in Nigeria. So, let's declare. <laughs> so I marched into residency, then I went through the, the process of uh, residency. In Nigeria, you know, we do our, our, our part one. Um, that, you know, we take the West African and national, and then I did the part two as well. And then I finished it in 2010. While I was doing my residency in Nigeria, I also did some external exams. So I took the UK, the Royal College of OBGYN exams. I went to London and spent some time, took the exams and became the um, MRCOG. And then I also took the GRE as well. So I came into this country with an admission to do an MPH. I came in in 2010, did an MPH at Harvard School of Public Health between 2010 to 11. Between 2010 and 11, I also was you know, preparing for these exams, which we'll talk in deep about, the US MLE, huh? which um, <laughs> it, took, it took me a year to prepare for. And I, I took step one, step two, and then I marched to residency in 2012. I did my, my first year of residency at Washington University in St. Louis in Missouri. Then I finished my second to fourth years of uh, OIG residency at Michigan State University. And then in 2016, I marched into to do a fellowship in Matana Fetal Medicine, which we call Fetal Matana Medicine in Nigeria. Um, and I'm going to finish that in two weeks. Then I'm going to be starting as an assistant professor in Matana Fetal Medicine at Johns Hopkins, July 1st. So, so you are, I mean, if I heard you correctly, you marched into fellowship in, and you're currently working at Johns Hopkins University? Yes. So I'm currently finishing a three-year fellowship in Matana Fetal Medicine, which is one of the fellowships you can do if you do OBGYN. You know, it's pretty interesting. Why I say it's interesting is because there's a lot of misinformation going on out there. Now here we have somebody who is a Niger IMG. And IMG came in from Nigeria to this country. Uh, and it's in one of the residences that people see as, you know, hard to get it. Yeah, we know it's hard to get it, OBGYN. Uh, and it's in a fellowship in one of the prestigious institutions in the United States of America. John Hopkins. I must tell you, it's, it's very inspirational. You know, I'm not surprised because I know you personally. You taught me, you know, when you were a resident back in Nigeria. So it's, it doesn't come to me as a surprise. But I would say it's something uh, inspirational. So what I want to ask you, uh, and a lot of people want to know. And you know, you said when you said the USMLE, the sound was so deep. That's to show you that it's not an easy, it's not an easy journey. Uh, for you, can you share with us uh, the challenges that you, you faced in preparing for the exam? Okay. Thank you very much. And I'm glad to share this because I think I've, I've talked to various people about this individually. But I think that we need to start knowing some of the things that 
if I were to write a book, and I'm glad you're doing this because this is going to go wide and people are going to see this and learn from us. I think one of the greatest challenges we have as international graduates is that our predecessors never told us some of the rules. There are, there are rules that are not written. There are unwritten rules, but there are rules that if you don't follow, life is going to be so difficult for you that you may not even end up marching into residency. And, and I will list those rules. The first rule is, before you write these exams, which is called the USMLE. So the USMLE, is not, you know, it's the United States Medical Assistant exams. As you guys know, there are four different exams. It's step one, step two, in two parts. You have step two, clinical knowledge, which is also like step one. Then the, the clinical skills, which is you go, you collect a patient, you examine a patient over, you know, that eight hour period and then they score you. Then the step three, which is also like the step two clinical knowledge. For you to be ECFMG, that's a new word again. ECFMG stands for the uh, Educational, sorry, the, the is it? Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates. Oh my God, I, am, I understand. It's okay. You're getting old, but yes, that is what it, you know. It, it stands for. That is the body that certifies you. The USMLE is the exam itself, but the ESFMG certifies you after you've taken steps one, steps two, CK, step two, CS. Those three exams are needed for certification, right? Now, like I said, the lack of people before us telling us what this exam is about is what is a problem. That's a major problem. If you ask me, that is a major because if somebody had called me when I was a 40 year old student and told me, do you want to go to the US? And I said, yes, I will want to go to the US. That person told me back then and said, the single most important thing you need to do, and quote me anywhere, I don't care where you come from, whether I come from Sokoto or from Kanu, the single most important criteria to market residency is your USMLE scores. That, there are so many things that can make up your going to residency, but that is the most, there is no substitute for it. If you fail those exams, and you don't do those exams, you may see much, but life is going to be so difficult for you. If you do those exams and you do so well, <laughs> it will be difficult not to match. The, the problem is you may not match into the big specialties, but you will match. So, the key is, you know, the kind of score you need to get. Now, so the score span from, you can score zero, which is very unlikely, or the maximum score is 300, which nobody ever gets, right? People score up to 280, believe me. I've seen people who had 280 scores. The good scores, the pass mark is above 200, right? But as an IMG, you shouldn't aim for 200, 210, 220. Those are not scores you should aim for. 230 is even on the lower side of normal. Nowadays, for an IMG, you should be trying to aim 240 and above to be competitive. Okay? Now, there are various ways to get this done. But the key thing is making sure that you ace those exams. And we, the people who have gone ahead of us, telling our juniors that these scores are important. Now, two more things about this, in, you know, in this direction. One is, what it means that if these scores are the most important criteria to match, what that means is, if you are not ready for this exam, do not write it. I don't care if you have 10 years post-graduation, because people will tell you, oh, they have 5 years post-graduation. Okay, you have 5 years post-graduation, you rush the exam, you write it, you score 200, you're screwed. But somebody who is 10 years post-grad, sit down, put 2 extra years, hit a 260, he will match and you will be there. Well, you are 2 years post-grad. So the key is that, like I said, there are various things that, that you know, criteria which I will list, but the most important is the scores. And the duration you use to prepare for these exams is an, a direct reflection of the score you make at the end of the day in the exam. So that is the first. The second is the all or none rule. So it's an exam that your first shot is your best shot. And subsequent shots, you can do. do. So I said all or none, meaning that if you hit 200, you passed, you can take it as a game, right? But that's a horrible score. 100 is a pass mark, but it's a horrible score. You will never match with that score. Right? But if you go below 200, 199, 198, or even less than that, you fail the exam. So you can write the exam again. Right? And then, this is one other thing you have to know in that line. Somebody who had a 170 in the first attempt and had a 250 in the second attempt is way better than you who had 200 in one attempt. Because that guy, had 170 
took it again at 250. Okay? Why you? You take 200, but you can't write it, you know, there's not again because you've passed. So, what this tells you is that preparation is key. If you are getting towards the exam and you're not ready, please, guys, defer the exam. Have three attempts to defer it. Defer the first time, if you're not ready after six months. Defer it again, if you're not ready after six months, defer it again. But the third time, if you're not ready, cancel the exam. Okay, again. Okay. You will not regret it. If you're not ready, when I mean ready, ready, like you see a question, you know the answer. It is not just work. You have to be ready. In your mind to be 260. Then go take the exam. That is the most important goal for me that I think. And you know, we'll talk more about other things that you need to do, but I think that is the most important criteria in residency. Put me anywhere. But, so I want to touch on something. Uh, there's this emphasis on observerships, on research, and US clinical experience. What is what are your thoughts on this? Good. So I started by saying the most important criteria is your scores, right? Now let me just briefly list the other criteria that will play a role. Need to, I, I'm a program director now. Yeah, there are a couple of other things we look for. Like I said, first thing, US MLA scores. And even, even with those scores, step one is the most important. So they because they will judge you with the US students to see what your score is like. You better score like them or more than them for them to say, okay, this guy is great. So, scores number one. Then other things will come. I don't know the order they, you know, they put them, but they come after scores. So, things like year of graduation, okay? Usually, there's a cutoff mark of five years. The way it works is most programs, they never even see your application if you're more than five years postgrad. Meaning that they send their computers to, to give me people who are five years below that means if you are more than five years, they may never miss your application at all. So in that situation, you may need people who know you in those programs to go and dig out your file and say, program director, this guy, his name did not appear because he's more than five years, but he has good scores. So that's another one. But don't be discouraged. You know, like I said, if you have good scores, somebody picks you out, talks to somebody, you will match. So that's number two. Number three is um, research, right? So no matter the amount of research you do, try to do one or two or three or four or as much as you can do. That counts. That also, you know, brings out the fact that you are likely going to, you know, be useful to them in that research round. Number four will be how valuable you are with respect to other degrees. So, like I said, I did residency back in Nigeria. So they felt that was, you know, something I, I would bring to the table. Some people, some people would do an MPH, which is a master in public health. That can also help. It was okay. This guy, even though they lack in this other, you know, other areas, they could also bring this to the table. Okay. The fifth thing, not the last, but among the numerous list, but this is the fifth, which Obana just brought up is observation. So this is very important, and many programs are looking into this because, trust me, I trained in OBGYN back home, but when I came to America to practice OBGYN, it was like light and darkness. Even though it's the same anatomy of the female pelvis, even though it was the same woman, right? But the way the practice was being done was so different that if I jumped into that practice without seeing the way people did it, trust me, I would have been nailed. So programs are beginning to require that you at least go in the clinic, go in the you know theater, go and watch what people are doing. See how they talk to patients. Very really important. See the way they order tests. See, see the way they run their, you know, ER. See the way they run their clinic. The way they dress. Those are some of the little things that you pick up during those observation months that will prove or tell the program director that this guy is willing and is ready to be part of us. So I think even though it's not a written rule, but programs are beginning to ask for it, and it can only add to the list of things that you have, right? It will not replace your scores though. It will add, it will make things better for you. It will make your application a good package. That, okay, check off this one, check off this one. So if you have an observation. And one other thing, it also help whoever you're doing your observation with them to write a letter of recognition for you. Which is another point that I you know, talk about. Your letters are also very, very important. Letters of recommendation, right? As a graduate from an, an international school, you need at least three letters. If you can get two of those letters from people in the US, that would be excellent. One must come from your school, from your dean, or from somebody who is there to show that you train them. 
that is a rule but if you can get two or more from u.s doctors who you did observation on that that would also boost your application i can't overemphasize that that would boost up to say that this guy he has worked under me i can certify that he knows what he's doing okay so those are the rules for so much and i think that it is it's you know it's important now there's no limit to how much you can do some to one month some to six months some to one year it's all between you and the person who you are doing it with i have somebody do it with me for two weeks and she was great i wrote a little recommendation somebody can say no you need to do it for one month somebody may say two months so between you and the person who is doing it with you the key is being able to get that experience and having a letter from that person that's the key chip into what you just said you know i always like to broaden the categories into modifiable and unmodifiable factors so the unmodifiable factors are your scores once you get your scores your score you can't change them but things you can modify are your observerships your clinical experience and nothing you can't modify is your year of graduation you can't touch that but things like observership research you can modify those things modify those things uh, so speaking about uh, OBGYN for an international medical brand can you touch on a little bit how difficult is it to get into do people even get into it at all you know did you stop at after you got it got in i guess the imgs who get into ruby giant so just tell us a little all right bit. so these are some of the myths that you guys have to know about there is no residence in america that if you want to do and you put your mind to doing it that you cannot do be it be it the most sorted after this neurosurgery to the list which i will not mention but any residence you want to do it may take you time you need to do multiple observations multiple research to get it you, you need to have high scores but anything you want to do you can do so the problem is some are more easily you know accessible than others like pediatrics family medicine internal medicine these three are the easiest three to get into i'm not saying they're easy but they're the easiest three to get into then you go to the second tier like OBGYN, pathology you know some surgical aspects the difficult ones will be like ophthalmology, neurosurgery, right? Urology. Those are like difficult to get. But Nigerians have gotten in there. IMGs, right? So the key is it's not as easy to get as you know medicine or pediatrics is because the number of people they take at each time. Medicine can take up to 40 people at once. BGY1. OBGY, the maximum any program takes in this country is 12. 70% of programs will take four a year. So if you imagine program taking four a year versus program taking eight a year, you realize that you need a lot fewer people to be to OBGYN than other well, specialties. But it is not impossible. If you get very high scores, you've proven yourself, you've worked in an OBGYN clinic, shadow them, you know, you have a shadow. Very much. But OBGYN is the most is the field that has the most indication in the whole world, even the US. And therefore, they want to take somebody they are almost certain has some skills to bring to the table so that they won't get sued and lose a lot of money sometimes when you bring up the topic I, when i bring up the topic of the img img talk you know some people this question comes up like uh oh are you are you encouraging people to leave uh, who's going to take care of the people at home in which case it's not it's not my intention because i know that this is a platform that also that work with doctors to take their skill also back home now for you as a, a, a physician who is training in, in who's, who, who trained or who is about to finish his training in the most prestigious hospital in this country, are there plans you have to take back your skill back home? Even if it's to go back and teach people in Saturday, is there any plan or have you been doing some stuff, something like that? So this is a very, very important uh, question and I think that part of the things that we who are here in this country should do is when we are trained, because they train you here in a very different way, you learn things. The major difference between American medicine and Nigerian medicine is the Americans are, I, I say this all the time, the Americans are proactive. Meaning that they don't wait for things to spoil before they, they fix it. They are two steps ahead. They look for those problems before they even start and fix it so that it won't cause problems down the line. That's the difference. So if we go back home and impact the same knowledge by spending some time with our people, doing like, you know, no matter how short, one day, two days, one week, you know, programs where we visit where we train or other places to give talks, encourage the young ones to, you know, come after us. Even if to, to train and go back home, people have done that. It's highly encouraged. So, yes, I do that. 
Um, in fact, in two weeks, I'm going to Nigeria, and part of my package, my, my program is that I'm going to give a, well, I'll dedicate two days to residents where we kind of teach clinical skills, ultrasound, ward rounds, grand rounds, and then I'm going to have a session with the medical students as well, you know, career talk and things like that. You know, part of this I tell medical students is decide on what you want to do. If you want to come to America, focus on it from your fifth year medical school. Prepare for those exams. Don't waste your time writing primaries. That is my own personal opinion. People may people may differ with that, which is fine. People may tell you, oh, write primaries, primaries as a backup. If it doesn't work, then you use those primaries. I did it all. And right now, I don't use my fellowship, both the UK one and you know and you know and Nigeria one. I just focus on America. Because we have all these things, we don't use it there. But I can tell you that most people who focus on one got it. Not all. The majority of people who focus on one. You want to go to the UK? Right IELTS, right club, focus on it, you will get it. Come to America, because like I said, the score is the most important thing. So if you put your energy in one thing and you keep hammering that thing, there's no way you won't score high. There's no way. We are all intelligent, we are all doctors. So if you come to America, 50 years is a good time. Start preparing for those exams so that you don't have a job. Write the exam. Okay, and then go from there. And, you know, let's start fine. We can't finish it in one session. So I would like to ask on behalf of my listeners, you know, trust me, there are a lot of people who keep asking me questions, which is why I decided to start this platform. If uh, we have more questions, because I know very soon people are going to throw in questions, would you be willing for us to have a session where, even if it's a live session, where we can answer those questions? Is this something you would be willing to uh, do for us? Look, I am somebody who went through this process in a very difficult way, and I would, even though people think I, I didn't do it you know, in, 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 in a difficult way, I know that I passed through hell. So, and I am somebody who believes in people coming after me not to suffer, right? I am willing anytime, any day, when you want to have any talk, live session, offline, I am happy to talk, answer questions, and you know, help as much people as I can, you know, to get it. Because I believe that the more we are into this program in this system, the more we can help other people who come after us. Alright, so I am highly supportive of this motive. I am very passionate about it as well, and I'm gonna give everything I can to make sure that this becomes a success. And I look forward to very good times and this program helping people, IMGs all over the world to get into residency with ease. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>